Hi there, welcome to season 2 of Stories of Modern Work podcast, where I discuss and learn from Office 365 users, consultants, developers and IT pros on how they use Office 365 as a modern work platform. My name is Jag Kakarlapudi and I am the founder of Modern Work Group where we help businesses with Office 365 user adoption, governance and business solutions. You can check out our website for more details at modernwork.cloud. Today we have with us Stefano Tempesta and Chender Ram from SX IQ to discuss how Office 365 apps can support your business for remote work. Let's get into the episode. Thanks thanks for coming on the show uh, Chenda and today we also have a special guest joining us uh, from SX IQ Stefano welcome onto the show Hello guys nice uh, to see you and thanks for hosting me <laughs> It's it's our pleasure actually to have you on uh, uh, so a brief introduction but uh, about Stefano Stefano is a uh, Microsoft MVP Uh, and he specializes in information security and he leads the uh, the SXIQ digital team as well but rather than me and in introducing uh, and talking about Stefano I'll leave it to Stefano please go ahead tell us a bit more about yourself yeah thanks jag uh, look um but very simple i'm originally from italy i moved to australia in 2013 and i've done a few things i'm um, background uh, uh, strongly technical uh, i jumped into the microsoft.net framework when it first came out in the market and uh, i remember it was over 20 years ago probably and uh, I-, i love building software i love uh, finding solution for customers uh, and this uh, brought me to uh, in all the passion for for the community for sharing these uh, not just uh, as part of my uh, daily job but also as part of my engagement with the community so i'm a microsoft mvp on azure ai and business applications which is all the aspect of dynamics 365 power platform so i love to combine uh, you no know, uh, solutions with uh, Uh, innovative technology like ai uh, machine learning and a bit of blockchain as well why not intrigues me and um, and then a few years ago um, uh, another mvp and i uh, founded a portal called 365portal.org which is a, a free community event conferences that we run all around the world Uh, around the Dynamics 365 and Power Platform. So we just go uh, around from the US to Australia, from uh, Europe to South Africa, and just share this experience with the local communities. Massive success, obviously, as you can imagine, in the last months, uh, uh, more, moving more into online events, uh, but typically there is an event every other Saturday or so on all around the world. So this uh, drives me Uh, insane sometimes because I really loved uh, putting a lot of effort in the community and um, I'm a Microsoft regional director as well which is uh, another sort of appointment that Microsoft uh, uh, identifies uh, for for people that attach technical expertise also to uh, business value and there are only 160 in the world so I'm very proud to be part of this group and we have a very nice line of communication with top microsoft executives uh, and the possibility to attend uh, tier 1 uh, conferences uh, like build ignite uh, inspire and you have probably heard that this year everything is going online so we need to be uh, you know we need to keep safe and do the best thing that we can do and i'm sure everybody is doing it because once we are out of this uh, there is a new digital world that we are learning and uh, i'm very glad uh, to to be part of it and i want to give my contribution as everybody else of course Yeah. Awesome. Oh god, we could see the passion the when you were describing it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, man, especially if you, if you want to be that, you know, uh uh that uh person in the community help you, you know, to help community to, you know, uh do work outside your normal work hours and not get paid for it. I think in a you need to have that passion and having something like an MVP uh program and also the regional director program is supports and encourages people um to be and and support so with with Stefano did touch base on online conferences right so talking yeah. about conferences i always had this um 
I would call a pet peeve of mine about conferences in US because we are we are in some way down under right and you know for us to go and attend all this ignites and you know the sharepoint conferences and things like that it's it takes a lot of time and effort uh, away from work uh, for us to actually go and money as well to go um, to go and attend these events right so now you know, secretly, I'm think, uh, thinking that, okay, it's actually good that everything is going to be digital now and we can yeah. have attend. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And look, uh, we need to get uh, you know, uh, the best out of this situation. There's always a silver lining around this. Uh, and uh, one can be exactly, as you said, uh, for us that we are down under in a very uh, uh, beautiful place, but also very isolated in some way. Uh, re going and uh, traveling uh, to Europe and to the US uh, is expensive and time consuming. Uh, I, I do remember uh, Microsoft running a few TechEd and Ignite conference uh, here in uh, uh, in Gold Coast, for example, I uh, I spoke a few times there, and now they are all centralizing these events uh, in the US. Uh, probably logistically makes sense, although uh, not many knows, and this is quite disappointing that they running also tour uh, of these conferences. There is a uh, insider that tour, there is a ignite uh, tour, there is a envision tour. Uh, so, which means basically they go in uh, ar around different cities uh, around the world uh, and do a mini free version of this big event. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, last February, and uh, wow, February is just over a month ago, and I was in Sydney. Uh, there were 5,000 people at the uh, convention center. Uh, I was speaking about blockchain in front of a large audience, and now we are at the beginning of April, just six weeks after that event, it seems another world. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, a combination, a combination of having local opportunities to attend these events and uh, virtual conferences, I think is the best. Let's try to get the best out of this situation. And uh, I'm glad to report that the Build will be online, Inspire will be online, MBAS, which is the business application uh, conference, will be online. Inspire in September will be online, which means that all of us can attend it free of charge. Well, probably we need to do some early wake up in the morning <laughs> to be on the Pacific uh, time zone, but that's okay. We can yeah. do that uh, for the sake of being connected with the community. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and I do remember waking up uh, quite early in the day or mid yeah. middle of the night to attend the SharePoint conferences as well. Uh, yes. Microsoft, though they are physical conferences uh, until now, they, they did a very good job of ha having few of those keynotes online, like, you know, streamed online at, uh, at live as well. So, yeah, that's that's good to have you, be have attending you been to, those. Have you physically been to a SharePoint conference, Jack? Not me, not, not to US, man. I never stepped in the US. No, I actually, that no. was probably in 2012, I think, or 2013, 2012. I still yeah. remember. I still have that T-shirt, which is very much the same color as yours. Uh, <laughs> it was amazing, man. That yeah. that was, I was so passionate. Of course, I'm still passionate. And I self-funded that trip for the conference ticket and then my flight. And, uh, well, I mean, the organization that I was working for then, uh, very kind enough to give me that time off from work, but yeah, otherwise yeah. I self funded it. But oh my goodness, what an experience! I had I think there were about ten thousand people. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. kidding. I have yeah. never ever seen that bigger crowd in Las Vegas. Amazing. Yeah. Sorry, I digress, but it no, just good. brought back memories when you were talking about conferences. Just amazing. We should probably do a separate podcast about conferences. I think. <laughs> of course, man. Yeah, I think we can talk a lot about conferences and and talking about one of the, the best things about conferences is going and meeting that community, right? I, you know, I've been as part of this podcast, I've been chatting with a lot of MVPs like yourself, Stefano, in the previous season as well, mm -hmm. and also. I'm in touch through LinkedIn videos and LinkedIn, uh, generally touch with other community members uh, who are quite active uh, in SharePoint in Office 365 mm -hmm. space. Going and meeting them, uh, I think would you know have that sort of like you know face to face yep. uh, interaction going on would really build the relationships and 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 good for both yourself for your you know uh, what you're trying to do in the community and also good for the uh, for the company that you're working and things like that as well. 
And and I think you know when things get settled uh, with all this COVID nineteen, when all the digital uh, online uh, on with online conferences especially, I think we can have a local gathering like a user group gathering and sure. actually have that uh, the the live stream going on in a big screen and we can all have our own sort of like a mini conference. Yeah, it's a good idea for sure. And yeah. look, uh, one thing that I miss uh, from doing this digital is actually what you said, the connection with people. Uh, a few mm. weeks ago, we had the MVP Summit, which is the annual gathering of all the MVPs. Uh, uh, once a year, uh, we are expected to meet, or supposed to meet uh, in, in in Redmond, uh, so at the Microsoft headquarters. And there are over 2,000 MVPs uh, from not every country and from every category going there and just... Uh, Shaking hands, a pat on the back, uh, have a laugh, have a beer, have a orange juice together, whatever is your preference. And uh, the value is a uh, twofold. One, obviously, you get to meet uh, the product groups from Microsoft, get the insight about roadmap, uh, yeah. provide your feedback. Uh, so incredibly valuable from a technical perspective, if that's your job. But the most valuable thing is uh, uh, connecting with people that uh, you probably uh, work uh, or at least connect uh, uh, regularly online and you never yeah. met or you met once a year and it's a great fantastic networking opportunity. So I was at MVP Summit uh, uh, two weeks ago but I had to wake up at three in the morning to connect remotely and uh, just uh, uh, virtually shake hands with people and uh, I can tell you it was valuable from a content perspective not quite the same from networking right <laughs> because you yeah. miss out a lot. Yeah, yeah. I think I think uh, the technology has to come catch up with this uh, remote work thing as well to have mm -hmm. that online conference and still try and have that sort of breakout sessions or you know have that uh, like you know hangout areas where people can go and interact. But you're right, it's not quite uh, same as having that face-to-face -face, uh, interaction uh, when you can pe meet people in person. Thanks, Stefano, for bringing up the MVP Summit stuff. Can we sneakily ask you anything uh, <laughs> that you can share with us from uh, from the MVP Summit? Try me. <laughs> you tell me. Tell me something that we don't okay. know about the roadmap. Okay, can I start? Yes, yeah, go yeah. for it. Can I start? Okay. Uh, uh, Project Cortex. When can I have my hands on it? I can't wait. I'm craving. I'm ready to do anything to play with Cortex. That's how yeah, so I, I, I see that you're coming from a SharePoint boy background, uh, Chandler. And uh, Project Cortex is exactly that, uh, bringing enterprise search to SharePoint. I mean, we all know that SharePoint has some very uh, capable capability for search, uh, even AI power search, so the possibility you not know, to index document, uh, not just in SharePoint, but also in OneDrive, in other external repository, and identifying uh, uh, some keyword uh, tags uh, uh, using the, the power of uh, um, cognitive services from Azure. But Cortex is doing more than that, is bringing knowledge management into this. So that means uh, that not only we are searching and indexing documents, but we are bringing together uh, connections between documents uh, using the, the power of graph. So uh, documents that are related to each other, uh, not just because uh, are from the same author, or from the same team, or from the same uh, so topic, but because there is a correlation that uh, the power of AI can identify and work uh, or more at semantic level. I think it's more complex to say than to actually start using it. Now, the good news, mm. um, the, 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 the Cortex project, which I believe is an internal name, so the actual marketing name uh, would be probably different, uh, oh, really? is currently in preview. Although I like Cortex, right? Because uh, it, it connects with the, with the concept of brain in some way. So he yeah. sent the, the image that uh, there is something smart happening in there. But anyway, um, Cortex is in preview. So if you go on the uh, Microsoft website, uh, you can subscribe for uh, uh, access to a preview. Uh, they've been phased now, so you, you may have to wait some time until you get access to it, uh, but you can have uh, uh, your first hands on uh, this uh, uh, new technology. Ben, uh, it is about SharePoint, but not only about SharePoint. No? It will extend also to Dynamics 365, to Azure Storage, even outside. Uh, 
you guys know Power Platform really well, right? You know that there are hundreds of connectors uh, in the common data service that allow to connect uh, to Google Drive, to Salesforce, uh, to Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, any external data sources. That's exactly the same uh, technology or the same power that is going to be used for in Cortex as well. Uh, when do you want to see this live? Uh, look, there is no official date just yet, and I'm talking now out of the NDA that we have also for, for, as MVP, uh, but rumors are, or, no rumors, but typically Microsoft has uh, these two major appointments in May and in November for making this public announcement. So the build conference is uh, sort of uh, uh, the big announcement uh, uh, deadline uh, uh, for for making uh, you know this uh, um, the, this general availability of products in the market. So stay tuned. Can you wait another six weeks until May? Come on, until no. uh, the, come on, <laughs> and then uh, you you'll be surprised. You'll be amazed. Did, yeah, did, yeah. Uh, sorry, just want to add on to that. Uh, as in, add on to my original question. Were there any sessions? relating to Cortex? Where did you actually see it in action? Did you see what you could do with that uh, as long as you can talk about it? You don't have to go into the specifics. Yes, uh, only one. And uh, it was uh, uh, with the father of uh, SharePoint, Jeff Tipper, and uh, he did mention uh, Cortex among a lot of other things. And um, so the things that I'm sharing now are, are, are around uh, what Cortex is uh, and what is uh, that is available in preview and uh, very likely we'll see something at build uh, are coming from his presentation. And it's always incredible to see Jeff Tipper, you know, a corporate vice president of SharePoint OneDrive, but su being such an amazing person down to earth, uh, engaging on Twitter and uh, there is no PR agency behind. It's actually him yeah. that he writes these things. And uh, he's uh, incredibly engaged also with the SharePoint uh, community, uh, recording sometimes some videos uh, to present uh, at the different SharePoint Saturdays. Such an amazing person. And I've been uh, honored to meet him in person uh, in Geneva, in Switzerland, a couple of years ago, at a SharePoint Saturday Geneva. Yeah, yeah, he he, he does uh, support SharePoint Saturdays yeah. uh, quite heavily as well. Uh, and you're right about him being very open in the community and helping out, quite active in the Twitter space as well. I do remember in uh, during one of the SharePoint uh, conferences back like two or three years ago, I think, he did reply to one of my tweets or retweeted something or liked something of what I tweeted and stuff. So he's, 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 he's out there and helping people and, you know, interacting with other SharePoint people like us. That's good. And by the way, I'm just checking out the uh, the Cortex Microsoft site and uh, mm -hmm. Chenda. It looks like mm -hmm. Stefano is right. Uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be you you can probably get your hands in six or yeah. eight weeks time because it says I, Cortex, I, I, Project I Cortex will be first. yeah Project I'm Cortex will be released in the first week. half of uh, 2020. So it's yeah. it's first half is two more months, man. By June. Yeah, so Microsoft is always a bit vague on these days. They don't want to commit also because now with people shifting to work from home or there may have yeah. been some uh, delayed or something. Uh, but the, if they say that, I would expect Build to be uh, the place for announcement. So stay yeah. tuned. Build, build is in May, isn't it? Uh, third week of May, I believe. Yes. May, May, right. yeah. For the yeah. build conference, I'm actually more interested to. Uh, I, I I like the pro project Cortex thing, and I understand project Cortex is the next big thing after Microsoft Teams as well. Um, uh, in terms of creating that knowledge management space automatically using the AI capabilities, that actually solves a lot of problems um, from a from an enterprise perspective. Also, one other thing that I, I predominantly like within the Cortex space is the auto classification of content mm, um, yes. around metadata. And you know, when you upload documents, if you have that ability to have that metadata filled in, you know, create those keywords and tags, I think it saves a lot of effort from users. And two, it creates that wealth of knowledge around the information that you're producing. And you can actually further create business solutions on top of that. 
Yeah. You know, exactly right. The combination with teams that you mentioned, for me, is spectacular because teams now is already a great tool you know, for, uh, for, for, for collaboration, for calls, video conferences. Uh, but I think it's missing that aspect of knowledge management, which is exactly, as you said, collecting documents in a way that are related to each other so that you can build a story and even uh, gather uh, sort of the feeling, the sentiment around it, uh, which is a, a, a practice of the uh, artificial intelligence uh, text analytics uh, branch, where you can uh, understand how people are interacting, engaging with, with a, within a team, but yeah. also with content. And I'm not talking just the rating, you know, the rating is a simple thing, a rate one star, five star, or like, dislike content, that's okay. But I'm really talking about around, uh, how content can make a difference because you're actually using it. So people that download and actually use a, a, a slide deck that a sales rep has presented, or they reuse some slide of it. So actually tracking all this uh, uh, knowledge that companies produce, and sometimes they just dump it into SharePoint as a repository, and they stay there, you can find them, you can search for that. But then when you actually get to use them, most of the times, uh, it is a bit disappointing to say, but most of the times you start over again. Yeah. And uh, and maybe you just copy a few ideas. Uh, but what about uh, you know, merging a slide deck with a video, with an Excel spreadsheet, uh, maybe even with a team uh, um, uh, planner, for example, and build a, a, a nice statement of work or a solution or something that uh, you know uh, can quickly gather all these pieces of knowledge together into something bigger. And um, yeah, no, look, uh, very briefly, I remember a few years ago when uh, there was no Teams yet, um, that I worked uh, and I presented a session around the sentiment analysis in SharePoint. So analyzing the engagement of people using graph, using comments, using text analytics from cognitive services, and understand how a different SharePoint site that typically are separated for each department. You know? So there is a site for sales, another one for HR, another one for finance, another one for IT. How they uh, engage and uh, what is the, the overall morale feeling of the team? Some people express uh, comments to content that are more positive, some other ones more negative, and then you see, hey, the sales team uh, is the, is happy, the IT team is not happy. What's the problem? As a line manager, you, know, you want to understand uh, how your teams are interacting, are engaging, and this is something that Cortex can offer out of the box. So great, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, along with the Cortex, I have to say that um, I'm also looking forward to the Microsoft Duo uh, Surface Phone, man. Uh, yes. I know they don't want to call it a phone. Uh, this, uh, the Are Surface they actually Duo. making one? I don't know. Really? Oh, no, you don't know that. You should check it out, man. It's quite uh, it neat. It's a phone? That dual screen tablet you're talking about. Are you talking about a phone? The tablet is the Neo, and there's actually a smaller version where you can actually make calls, and it's got Android built into it. It's, it's called Android, Duo. Yes, yeah. No more yeah. Windows Phone. <laughs> Am I looking forward to it? No. Oh, man, that'll be the next phone. I, I, I'm, I'm going to stand in the line and buy it if there's if, if, uh, if they're going to release it soon. <laughs> I can't you wait for it. What happened with the Windows Phone? No, it's going to be an story. Android one, so you'll have that ecosystem of apps and everything uh, built in. And along with that, you'll have a better integration with your Office 365 apps. You, you know, especially when you have this two, two, two screen thing, you can actually have like one app on one screen and the other and the uh, in the other the secondary screen, and you can actually collaborate between. Or you know, there are few modalities where you can use those as well. So it's quite check it out uh, when you have some time this weekend. And you, um, you'll definitely, you'll definitely uh, switch over from your iPhone. Yeah. I don't know if you can see my background here. It's all <laughs> Apple. The Windows Phone in the past, and I did like it when it came out, but maybe after a couple of weeks, I didn't like it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, cool. yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, um, I did use the Windows Phone, the Lumia 920, I think. Mm -hmm. if I oh, yeah. Wrong. I, oh, yeah. The the user interface is quite neat. You know, the user experience is quite neat. The only complaint that we had is the interoperability between other other platforms or, you know, the lack of apps is one of the other main major issues. But the actual interactivity, the actually, you know, 
like you know when you click the the live tiles changing and giving you the live, you know real time information and all of that i actually like that a lot i i actually even participated in one of the competitions microsoft hosted where you had to develop an app within a day or something submit it and mine was selected and i actually got a lumia 924 or whatever that was for free which was 600 dollars worth then cool and yeah i sold it later that's a different story but <laughs> <laughs> anyway sorry i think we are digressing now uh, so i think you know in in this let's let's switch back to the actual theme of the podcast itself where we wanted to talk about office 365 apps for uh you know for remote work uh, to keeping in line with our you know the theme mm-hmm. for the uh, the for the for the podcast is you know there are a lot of apps in office 365 natively that you can actually go and use and and get like you know be more productive be more collaborative and things like that but but i also wanted to touch base on some of the custom applications that you guys are building um in terms of uh, when i say custom applications they don't need to really be like you know a custom developed application rather it could be something with a low code no code using power apps or nintex or you know the other ecosystem applications in office 365 to to actually have that mashup or or create that app and roll it out to the users in a very short notice you know yeah. Um, one of the things that I wanted to touch base is around task management. You know, uh, you don't need to do anything uh, with respect to actually creating that sort of new uh, a task management application. But there are Microsoft Planner and To Do, right? Planner is for Teams and To Do is for Personal. But the interact, yeah. the interoperability between the integration between both these applications have increased in the last few months, and it's it, it's quite good. Uh, so, are you? What's your experience from a task management perspective, especially when you're working remotely? Uh, we'll start with Chenda. Yeah, for sure. Look, um, number one thing is I have always been a fan of using a to-do or a task management app right from a long, long time. And then uh, it's going back in time when we had Wonderlist. We still do. Of course, we all know that Microsoft bought that and stuff like that. That's a different story. But I've been using Wonderlist for a long time uh since the time it was released a uh, very long time ago uh, because i found that as one of the cleanest task management apps and it was just amazing and then of course now um i do use the planners and to do a lot no doubt about it because i am involved in a number of projects and then um i need to keep a tab on absolutely everything and also to ensure that i uh, uh, you know uh, complete the ones which are uh, which are on a priority and things like that. And then, of course, the completion date does keep changing for certain things, no doubt about it. But, um, yeah, I mean, um, aside from that, I also use uh, OneNote big time too. So I don't think I could live without these apps, at least in the current state of the world that we are living in, because... Um, to be honest with you, um, I've, I've always been a fan of using whiteboards as well in the office when we are physically there. Uh, there are certain things when you're discussing with your team members and things like that, you quickly jot, jot the down on a whiteboard and then I translate that into the task or to-do app, whatever that is, and then, um, or a planner. Um, and I found this on the web. I don't know. Siri just got excited with what I was talking about. <laughs> I think we, yeah, Siri got offended because we started talking about Surface Duo or something, you know? <laughs> and it's and, and and she wants to make a presence known. <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird. It just keeps coming up every now and then. It has happened in other meetings as well. But yeah. anyway, uh, so one of the things that I also do is uh, I try to. Uh, share my experiences with some of my clients when I speak to them during meetings because I could see that there is a lot of potential for them to start using planners or you know to-dos and whatever uh, to help them a bit more in their daily lives Um, and then they are starting to see how it can help them as well so yeah um, yeah, I love it. Yeah excellent Uh, what about you uh, Stefana you're a big user of planner and to-do? Uh, look, I'm uh, I'm coming from a, a, a software engineering background, so I like uh, uh, sort of these uh, uh, Scrum Kanban boards. Uh, mm-hmm. So I prefer Planner over To Do. 
because planner is like that you can assign different stages uh, you can even work collaboratively in a team so assign it to different team from a personal perspective so just my own task I prefer uh, to scatter uh, my activities over a timeline. So I'm more traditional, Outlook. So I just block some time in my Outlook calendar to say, hey, that time I'm doing that, I'm doing that, I'm doing that. This goes along also with calls, or with meetings that uh, we have at work. So it's a way just to structure my time. But when working in a team, I prefer uh, the like of a Kanban board. So definitely planner for sure, uh, but in a more distributed team, uh, we use a lot of uh, Azure DevOps because Azure mm -hmm. DevOps has uh, Kanban boards, has uh, repos, has uh, uh, you know or pipelines. Uh, but specifically yep. from a time perspective, uh, boards. Yes, excellent. Especially from a software development perspective, yeah, using the sure. DevOps, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It, it makes sense. Yeah, and I, I wish there is actually a sort of uh, a plan. Yeah. So with this software development side of things, I wish there is actually a, a sort of integration with the Azure DevOps and the planner, especially if you wanted to share some yeah. of the tasks from your DevOps into 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 the public uh, the Kanban board. Like you know, the rest of the team can actually have a look at it. Like the, so, that'll be great. Uh, I'm a big user, as I said before, right? Uh, I've actually have a story with the the to do. I'm also a big user of Wonderlist. I have been using Wonderlist. Oh, yeah. uh, from uh, from when it was a startup uh, and started in Germany, yeah. I think. Um, and I've got my wife to start using Wonderlist as well. So we actually use Wonderlist for grocery lists and you know the things that we need to do around house or projects and things like that. Um, uh, recently, a, a message came up in Wonderlist saying that it's going to go away on the 1st of May, I think, in, oh, really? in a month's time. Yeah, yeah, because it's now been, um, you know, uh, Microsoft is... Is, is getting rid of Wonderlist and to do to do is the the app to go for all the post for the for okay. the personal task okay. management. I so no, I, I told that to my wife. Still gonna be there, but there's no going to be there's no updates for it. But so the app itself will be gone. I think the app itself will be gone. Mm. Oh no. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they actually there's a bit of news around that too. The the guy who started Wonderlist wanted to buy back uh, mm. the uh, and he started some sort of uh, crowdfunding. Uh, campaign for to buy right. the thing back from yeah. Microsoft and that failed or yeah. something like that. I'll, I'll share the links to that particular news article. But Wonderlist is going away, and To Do is the app to go with it, right? So now I went to my wife and said, "Hey, uh, we need to switch our grocery list from Wonderlist to Microsoft To Do." And she is mm -hmm. a big user of Slack and uh, the Google thing with oh. their. And I said, uh, for for you to access, you need to set up your uh, you know Gmail account as a Microsoft account and login. And and she's like, hang on, what is Microsoft account again? <laughs> and it's <laughs> so there's exactly. a bit of user adoption issues going on at the moment in our family too for me to get her onto the Microsoft platform. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be, be careful. You, you're stuck at home. <laughs> <laughs> so I need I need to start using my change management uh, practice exactly. framework <laughs> to to exactly. get her to jump on the Microsoft bandwagon. So that's exactly. good. Um, and 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 Chenda, you you did uh, actually talked about a uh, few apps that you guys are actually building to support uh, the yeah. remote work, uh, especially for from uh, from your clients' perspective and things like that. Can you share some details around uh, the forms and the the apps that you guys are working on? Sure. Look, um, of course, uh, one of the we're all living in a very, very interesting uh, situation, and uh, most organizations have have uh, have had to switch to a remote working uh, methodology uh, without any notice, right? Overnight, there must have been organizations which have must must have just switched straight away. Oh, I see someone uh, sharing something. Oh, Stefano, there you go. Yeah, so, Stefano is sharing yeah, a photo so, of the actual what, app. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Awesome. That's very good. Um, so what we decided to do internally in SXIQ is, of course, uh, this is uh, uh, a, you know a brainstorming session that we had internally, myself, in the digital team, uh, Stefano, and uh, also our uh, digital general manager, Cam. Um, so we decided that we wanted to do something f as a community thing for our clients, not just our clients, for anyone for that matter. Because the thing is, 
uh, one of the key things is when a staff member, regardless of any organization, will have to switch to a working from home uh, approach, uh, what are the key things that he needs to tick as, uh, you know, from a hell uh, OHNS perspective, uh, just so that they are covered off, as yeah. in the employee is safe, he's got a proper workstation to work, and then he has, you know, either at least one screen or whatever that is. I'm just making it up here. Um, and he I just, you know, ensures that he is working in a safe environment. That's the whole premise of this. So we decided to come up with this form, as you can see here, uh, which is pretty cool. So we decided to do it in uh, two flavors. One is the Nintex version uh, for clients who have already had Nintex licenses and then also a power up version for organizations who do not have Nintex but are, are licensed to use power apps as part of their Office 365 licensing. So uh, the apps obviously uh, the form which you can see on the screen now looks exactly the same. Of course there's minor changes uh, from an aesthetic point of view but uh, but yes so this actually works a treat. So we have been able to uh, deploy this for a number of clients and in fact uh, one of the clients uh, was so happy and they put up a LinkedIn post you can see it on my LinkedIn feed uh, later uh, they've been so happy with this because in a very very short span of time we were able to uh, design the form for their needs and then yep. uh, deploy it on their tenant and then they actually went live within a day or two I think and they were super happy so this has been this has been something really nice uh, uh, especially it's working really well for our clients and there are some of other clients who are also in the process of getting the power apps version of it deployed as we speak perfect, perfect. just to reiterate on this point uh, 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 this form is off uh, completely free of charge yes. license is excluded a suggestion of goodwill for all of us uh, uh, to, to give a contribution and help each other. There's not mm -hmm. the time to monetize on this situation. This is the yeah. time to stick together and go through that. It's a simple form. It doesn't take too long to build it, but it's there, it's ready. If anybody wants it, reach out because we are definitely uh, here to help organizations get better on their digital uh, footprint. Yep, that's a great initiative mm -hmm. uh, there, Stefano, from SXIQ, guys. Uh, um, so with this, so if someone wants to get in touch uh, and, and, and get this form deployed, uh, how do they need to reach out to you? Chandra, Chandra. Oh, <laughs> no, it's, uh, well, it's any one of us, either myself um, or Stefano, uh, we're more than happy to help. Uh, it's it's uh, something that we are uh, very happy about working with organizations to enable them to switch to this remote working operation now. Uh, just so that at least this is one worry out of their head, just so that we can help them out. It's totally free of cost, and then uh, we do we do everything for them uh, in cool. terms of getting this rolled out. And yeah. also, yeah, um, do you want me to add on something else in this context? Um, okay. So I would also like to point out another thing that we did as well. So uh, as part of this remote working or the work from home checklist form that we built. We also helped one of our other clients to have um, a crisis management portal or a COVID-19 uh, portal uh, because at this stage of, of course everyone's even um, you know me personally I get to read so many things uh, which has a positive and negative impact on me so I've limited on uh, my resources in terms of what I will really need to be reading and what I need to be consuming. So putting that into an analogy, uh, what we have done is uh, we've helped one of our clients. That's again, uh, it's up on my LinkedIn feed for people to go have a look at it. One of our clients uh, wanted us to help them build a COVID-19 portal. Um, essentially, the whole premise of that portal was to have um, uh, information that's relevant for the staff members who will need to know in terms of, of course, I haven't got a screenshot here, uh, but I'm more than happy to share a link to it uh, later. Sure, sure. Um, so the whole premise of that was to have a central uh, source of truth for anything related to uh, the crisis management in the current crisis, of course, um, COVID-19 specifically, and a, a number of frequently asked things which basically 
uh, outlines, the things that what do I do if I have to work from home from tomorrow? What are the things? And then that answer will also have a link to the work from home form that we built. Um, yep. And then also some of the videos from which are uh, you know related to COVID-19 and things like that, which are worthwhile having a look. Those are the type of things. So so the content for that page is going to be updated in real time by uh, the comms team of that organization. But however, they wanted to get uh, something kickstarted uh, like within a day, just so that yeah. we can they can put this out there for their staff members to to of course let them know that we are here uh, to help them. Um, yeah, perfect, and perfect. so it, it was a I, I would like to highlight uh, that this was obviously a responsive uh, um, portal that we built uh, using live tiles. I would like to mention about them because what they really did well was coming up with a template, which is again, this is again something that I'm so happy about the fact that uh, some of our partners are doing things as a community again to help organizations in this current situation that we are in. Yeah. So they built, a, they built a template straight away, uh, which could enable organization kickstart on building a um, crisis management portal to kickstart it. Of course, we, 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 we worked with our client to make changes to that and uh, in respect to the things that will actually work for them and stuff like that. But that was a good starting point to get things started. Um, so yeah, I would like to say thanks to LiveTiles on that note. So thanks for that. Uh, so Stefano has actually shared a screen and uh, wants to talk about the emergency response oh, exactly. gallery as well. Stefano, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but on the crisis management site, uh, the portal that you guys built in terms of live tiles, what if a customer doesn't have a live tiles uh, add on? Would they still be able to uh, get get this crisis management site built in using the native Office of course, of course, yes, of course, uh, for sure, hundred uh, percent. We can definitely do something uh, with uh, SharePoint mode and out of the box too. Um, yep. And uh, it is, uh, it is, it is absolutely going to be uh, easy for us to help organizations uh, uh, build something, even in the absence of not having live tiles. Yes, we do have some of our customers. Uh, that we are currently speaking to, uh, which are who are potentially going to be getting this portal set up very, very soon, because That's right good. now there is a need for that. Yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, the the portal that you guys are setting up is, is is going to be more Australia, New Zealand centric. I'm guessing uh, the more regional centric because Microsoft yes. has actually put together a a similar sort of crisis management uh, portal too, uh, mm -hmm. and it's available on the Lookbook as well. So where you can actually deploy a, a central location for you to go and get information around uh, sure. the crisis stuff. I actually wanted to share something on top of that, and also want to ask a few questions on the OHNS form. Uh, but uh, let before we do. This, that um, Stefano, uh, you, you, you've wanted to share a few things around the emergency response gallery from uh, Power Platform. Yeah, so but look, very briefly, uh, because obviously we've been talking what uh, we've been doing as an organization, but I don't want to take this as an opportunity to self-promote. This is about community Go for it, helping yeah. each other, as I mentioned. So it's worth mentioning also that the entire Power Apps community, so from uh, from Microsoft, from uh, MVPs, uh, from uh, any passionate people around the world, have put together an emergency response gallery that you can find. Uh, I don't know if people can see the URL here later, but anyway, they can just go on the Power Apps community, which is uh, powerusers.microsoft.com, and search for emergency response gallery. And there are a lot of templates. Uh, for tracking the, this uh, uh, coronavirus uh, spread, for emergency response, uh, for communication in terms of crisis. Uh, think about large organizations where suddenly people are working from home and uh, they have to get in touch and people may not have uh, immediate a line of communication, maybe be disconnected. They their VPN to their office doesn't work. Uh, their security uh, or their workstation, Tom, is not secure enough to have a document of a containing sensitive data allowed to to be shared. How do you enable a 
safe, secure communication, especially with, with uh, people in the regional uh, areas of the country uh, yeah. where no connectivity can be a stake. Uh, so implementing uh, simple apps at the end, uh, but with some uh, workflows in there to automate communication, which via email, but even over SMS, for example, when email is not accessible, can be a good workaround to stay in touch and communicate uh, 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 promptly and in uh, the the best way. I actually re remember working on a, a similar application years ago, completely unrelated to COVID-19, when uh, uh, in an educational uh, institute we were to communicate with students in uh, in areas that were affected by at the time there were some. Uh, uh, um, uh, so sort of a terrorist attack in Europe a few years ago and uh, building this sort of communication response system on uh, power apps on SharePoint uh, or, or whatever tech stack you want to use is yeah. essential in this uh, situation. So again, I'm the sort of uh, uh, a solution architect with a strong engineering background. I don't like to reinvent the wheel every time. If you guys out there in the community are thinking around of building an emergency response system, a crisis communication system, have a look at this gallery because there are templates ready to be used as a starting point and then you can personalize to your specific needs. Yeah, excellent. Uh, especially, you know, um, with the COVID-19 stuff, uh, having such emergency response applications is, is quite useful. I can think of a use case from a aged care uh, sector, right? At the yeah. moment with the aged care, with the COVID-19, you know, most of the... Um, you know, deaths we are seeing is in the big, like you know, in the in the aged care sector, and there are yes. restrictions around movements around within the aged care itself. So you're not allowed to go in or you know have that sort of interaction with the with the you know the in the people in the aged care, right? So as uh, IT departments dealing with aged care, especially supporting that front line. Uh, service providers, you know, the support workers, you know, who takes care of the uh, the elderly needs to have such apps at their disposal to keep in touch, keep in keep informed of of what's happening, and also uh, request for any any sort of you know emergency um, things that they may need to 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 get support of. Uh, and they, as you're right, Stefano, you th there are a lot of work that's already been done um, in in the power uh, power apps community, power users community as well. So you can actually go get that and start to build on top of it. You don't need to really use right. as is. You can start. You have a good foundation to start with, and then you can build on top of it. It's the same thing with the OHNS form as well, right? The guys you you guys sure. build. For example, I can think of many. Uh, additional use cases on top of the form. Just not having the form, um, yes, it does allow you to have that sort of home work from home agreement sure. in place and and uh, have that uh, sort of like uh, what do you call a a uh, uh, a record of uh, of you know that the agreement in place. But you can actually build workflows on top of it, right? You can also build like. Yeah. Uh, um, a, if someone doesn't complete the work from home agreement in in the in the time, you can actually have delegations or notifications built in, and things like that as well. So Chanda, when when you when you walked away for a second there, we we're talking about OHNS form and how you can actually, uh, you know, increase the capability on the form itself to build using the Power Automate or using the Nintex to build additional workflows, you know, the like delegations and notifications around that too. So uh, it's it's the OHNS form. Not not many organizations really think about this or users think about this, but uh, it actually has a, a really good advantage from a compliance and insurance perspective as well. So as a work from home employee, you need uh, the employer is is um, obligated to make sure that you have a safe working environment to work with. Uh, if something happens in your home when you're working, you get tripped by the wire or you know there's an electrical surge and something happens and stuff like that you know the employer is is liable for that and you know That's having right. having making sure that the employee who doesn't really think about this it's it's their home right why would i need to go and you know check uh, if my electricity is right if there's no wires you know dangling all over the place lying on the floors and things like that 
they don't really think of in that lines. But now that you have that checklist, then they have to go and fill it in and make sure that it's all been take, uh, taken care of um, and you have a secure workplace. I think it, so it protects the employer and the employee as well. Yeah, and uh, secure, but also ergonomic. Uh, we have extended yeah. this form, which, as you said, is a template to start, uh, and then you can personalize the way you want, adding even a video to how to set up your desk to be ergonomic, so that you can uh, sit uh, uh, right up, uh, that uh, uh, you know you have a proper uh, light uh, in, in, in your room. Uh, that's the starting point. That's the template, then add anything you want uh, to uh, make sure that uh, your staff has the necessary information to, to work from home, especially for people that are not used to that, that have been traditionally working from the office for, for, for years and years. Now suddenly, but really suddenly, as a, a day over the, uh, the other one, overnight change, working from home is a major shift mentally, but also physically. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. So I'm also working on something called a remote work central. Uh, it's 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 again a portal uh, on, on, inside SharePoint. It's it's on the premise of that crisis management. Crisis management is is sounds like you know it's only during the crisis management, right? But the thing is, the way that we're going to work from now on is going to change. You'll see a lot more businesses, a lot more employees are going to get used to working from home, and yeah. and and the businesses will start to support that work from home, work remotely thing, right? So we're actually putting together. A, a central portal to get all the information that you require from a from from working from home perspective or remote working remotely perspective and and crisis management is one of part of that along with that you're getting like you know all sorts of uh, videos explaining how to use different applications you know if you're using VPN you know how to how to use VPN if you're using teams how to use teams you know there's a bit of tutorials in there and also the forms like you said the OHS form there's also a few engagement related forms as well so especially when you're working away from your office it you, the employers need to keep make sure that the employees are engaged and and motivated to work as well so what we're doing is we're also building something like an employee feedback and a net promoter score system into this uh, into this as well so that you constantly asking employees to say provide feedback you know tell us if there's any issues you know have that sort of interaction going on so or else the employees can go and make anonymous complaints or feedback or things like that to share what's working for them what's not working from them how the employer can support them uh, in in terms of working from remo remotely, so because employees are staying away from organizations and working remotely doesn't mean that organizations can't support them. So we're building that sort of like a central portal where you have all your policies re around remote work in one place, all your communications, all your training videos, you know, any applications that you need to use, all within the same hub, and then they can actually log in and, and get access to that and so on. So is this something that you're building for a client specifically, or is that something that you're just no? I, I'm just just uh, building this in now in, in my free time to actually release a video uh, shortly on you know like a tutorial video on, on how organizations can go in and build such things. Love it. Is that something that you can show us maybe in the next episode? Uh, maybe not in the next one. Pro probably we'll do it in the episode four or so. Okay. Yeah. Or sure. or have a separate uh, because in the next episode we want to talk about uh, security. Now that okay. we we yeah. have security expert with us we wanted to concentrate on on the information security and also securing yourself while working remotely as well there's a lot of tips that stefano can share with us um, yeah. because a lot of lot of things tips that uh, you know things that you would not not think of uh, and and yeah. but you should be aware of uh, mm. when you're working from remotely so that's a sneak peek for next week but this week i think uh, uh, we, we touched base on some of these forms and, and portals and things like that. Stefano, you did actually talk about a bot uh, uh, as right. well uh, to support remote work. Can you just share some, some thoughts on that? Yeah, so look, uh, first of all, it, it, it's a combination of um, having some reliable data and uh, the technology for a bot uh, to uh, surface this information. Uh, we are all uh, on different social networks, uh, especially you know Facebook, Twitter, where 
uh, there is no much control on the quality of data. So what we read they may not be uh, of the best quality. We don't know. So it's important to identify those uh, websites, data sources where information is reliable. So there is a template again. So as raw materials to start with. And uh, um, let, let me show you this in uh, the next podcast. But for now, just very briefly, this uh, uh, this uh, template for a bot which has been uh, built using uh, Power Virtual Agent, uh, which is you know the, 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 this tool uh, that combines uh, conversational AI with the power of uh, Power Apps, basically, uh, so low code or even no code at all, then uh, can emerge information around, uh, in this case, COVID-19, uh, from uh, reliable sources. And you do that uh, by sort of talking to a person, to a bot, but in a conversational language. So rather than having static FAQs, you know, that you read uh, uh, statically, that you have a list of it, then it just asks a question in your own natural language. And the bot yeah. is able to understand the flavor of the language. So you don't have to match keywords, but actually understand the meaning of what you're saying. So natural language processing, NLP, and then identifies the best answer and provide you with uh, options or recommendation. Uh, I'll show you that on, on the next podcast. I think cool. it's very valuable. And uh, again, this is a template, a starting point, and then uh, uh, organization people can personalize the way they want. Excellent, so, excellent. Okay, I have I've... a question in regards to this. Sorry, Jack, were you, were you go, saying Go for it. Um, I was going to ask, what does this mean from a licensing perspective for an organization? If we, uh, if there was a, let's say, a not-for-profit organization, uh, and obviously they, you know, they do not want to spend money on something like this, uh, what does it mean? And what does it mean for for other organizations which are not not for profit? Uh, so look, this goes down to the license for uh, Power Virtual Agent, uh, mm. so Power Platform in general. Uh, the commercial license, non-profit licenses are available. And also um, keep in mind that Microsoft has extended a six months uh, uh, sort of premium license for, uh, for, for organization to cope with this uh, new way of working. Mm. So mm. get some information around it uh, because uh, uh, some organization may qualify for this uh, offer and have access to Power Platform, to Teams, and in, in a premium version, so not the free tier, and uh, but for free. So for, for, for the next six months, which is a great way to get started and uh, especially use uh, this uh, template for chatbot for emergency response for uh, communication in terms of crisis uh, and then between us if you don't want to use it uh, after six months uh, you just shut it down right mm, yeah, hopefully mm, yeah. in six months from now we are out of this situation that's what we're really hoping Fingers for. Crossed. yeah Yes. Uh, and, and from a license perspective, uh, the virtual agent is not that expensive uh, from a, especially if it's a large non-profit organization. I yeah. think it's thousand bucks, thousand Australian dollars uh, for say up to 2000 sessions a month. Um, oh, so, okay. and that gives you a lot of uh, meat on the bone from a, from a functionality point of view yeah. on how, and mm -hmm. then you just, just go in and build, spend a day or two to actually build the virtual agent and, and, and use, use that. Um, so it's it's not like you have to spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in order to get a bot built mm -hmm. and, and and deployed. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I can already Perfect. think uh, for one of our clients, which this can actually really work a treat. We'll chat about this maybe in another offline session. Uh, yeah. Cool. But it's a great great one. Yeah. Cool. cool. Excellent. I think uh, let's start wrapping things up. Uh, I'll just uh, quickly summarize on some of the topics that we've talked about uh, today. We talked, uh, we touched on, you know, online conferences, uh, you know, the MVP summit. We touched based on the uh, project Cortex, which is going to be released in the first half, if not in, in the in the next coming months. Um, we're quite keen to get our hands on and, and test and play with it. Um, we'll probably have a separate uh, session on project Cortex when it's when it's in preview and when we when we can get our hands sure. on. Um, 
uh, we also talked about you know some of these apps that uh, that like you know we've touched base on the OHNS checklist app, uh, the crisis management portal that uh, you've guys built uh, using live tiles and also non live tiles version of it as well. Um, we've touched on I suppose, briefly touched about discussed on the emergency response gallery from Power Platform and how you could actually. Uh, get the foundational layer and use it and, and build on top of it uh, to support your frontline workers or, you know, the emer- people working in the emergency sector uh, as well. Thing that I'm actually working on at the moment called the Remote Work Central yeah. or the Hub. Uh, we'll touch on that uh, in the next coming episodes and also stay tuned for more uh, a, a tutorial on uh, how to build that. Um, and uh, Stefano and Chenda, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, before Thank wrapping you. things up, uh, can you each of you give a, a share a productivity 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 tip to, uh, with with, um, the, with the listeners? Uh, okay, maybe Stefano, do you want to start, or I can? Yeah, no, for sure. Look, uh, the first one actually, I I I, I, I borrow from you, Chandra. Uh, do organize a virtual coffees with your colleagues uh, on even on a daily basis. Even if you have to touch for ten minutes, uh, we are no longer in the office. Uh, we we cannot pat each other on the back. We cannot take a coffee uh, down the corner of the beautiful uh, uh, coffee shops in Melbourne. But do have a virtual coffee just to keep. Uh, uh, the engagement going, having a quick chat with uh, your colleagues, uh, and don't talk about work. Just say, "Hey, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What are you yeah. What are you doing in the morning, in in the day, in, in the afternoon?" So that is more from a uh, engagement perspective. From a productivity perspective, uh, what I do is uh, dress up for work. You are at home, don't stay in your pajama. And uh, if you are a, a woman. Maybe if, also if you are a man, put your makeup on <laughs> because you need to feel good with yourself. Uh, don't let things go. Don't be negative. Uh, it's a temporary. It's going to be OK. And uh, working from home is just an opportunity to save on commuting time. <laughs> yeah. um, so keep on being productive uh, and be uh, you know, as you were in the office. Yeah, perfect. Like uh, thanks, Stefano. Um, well, coming to mine, I have done a few things and I do a few things differently now. So, yes, one of the things I do for sure on a daily basis, we I organize these virtual coffees with Stefano and with other people in our teams. And we tend not to talk about, we tend to talk about work when we st- start off those sessions and I make it a point to say, all right, let's talk about everything which is not work related. So, right. yes, and we, we do that and then it's actually really helping for sure. And talk I've about the quiz. It. Talk about the quiz you guys doing every Friday. Yeah, that's that's actually good. Uh, that's a great initiative from our uh, employee experience team, which is uh, people and culture or human resources. That's something that uh, which is being very, very, very well organized. And uh, that goes for about 45 minutes or so uh, with um with questions being thrown to the people who joined in that live uh, sorry i was going to say live tiles meeting teams meeting um and uh, there's there's 100 dollar vouchers for the grabs too so people have won a number of prizes and then yeah it's it's actually engaging everyone uh in in this situation so one of the things that i do differently now is or or I've extended from what i've been doing the last few weeks is not just with my colleagues, I also tap into some of my uh, current clients and to tap into some of my ex team members, tap into some of my uh, ex colleagues just to check how they're doing. Because yeah. until two weeks ago, we have all been really, really busy. Of course, we are even busier now, no doubt about it. But I make it a point to schedule that at least that 10 minutes catch up to say hello and how you're feeling and things like that, that really helps. And at the same time, I mean, what I get to hear from some of these conversations that I've had with some of the uh, clients that I have been speaking to or my uh, ex-colleagues is they appreciate the time that I have taken to schedule that little virtual coffee with them. Even though even it's just 10 minutes, someone made it a point to say hello and just ask how they were doing. And uh, from the other productivity perspective i am totally with stefano when he said dress up 
yes, I totally, totally do that because that hasn't changed at all ever since even I've started working from home because uh, myself and my uh, dog, we are up at 5.15 a.m. in the morning. We still go out for a walk and I come back, have my shower and the only thing which is which has changed now is I don't have to commute to work. I just come to my office room at home. But um, I'm there. Like I'm this is this is pretty much how I dress up even when I go to work, of course, without the I hat. Know. And I also wanted to mention one other thing um, is I got this is something I of course I draw. I try to draw inspiration from pretty much everyone and a recent inspiration uh that i decided to you know take this on board was from my manager general manager cam uh for the digital team he has shifted his office temporarily of course in his backyard it's absolutely stunning so we i was totally blown away during one of our teams calls when he showed his backyard and with greenery and fresh air sunlight these things really really help like right now i'm like i'm so enjoying with this sunlight hitting on me here uh but it's just amazing so you don't get things like this when you're in an office building you don't try to actually even appreciate the sunrises the sunsets and things like that that you get to see now you actually get time to experience things like that which is interesting yeah excellent sorry excellent. Jack, you were saying something yeah yeah no uh when, when you said something about uh the commute i've actually uh i, I myself didn't prepare my tips uh so uh, then as then I, I, I when you said commute then something actually clicked in my mind now um Actually, you know what? A lot of organiz a lot of people, uh, we are quite used to commuting an hour or 40, 40 minutes, 30 minutes to and from work, right? So it's almost like an hour in our day's life, uh, in our daily life, right? So how about we actually use that one hour of commute time for self-help? Forget Correct. work. You know, you don't need to jump on the computer at eight o'clock in the morning or you know at eight thirty. If you if you're generally commuting from eight thirty to nine or eight o'clock to nine or after five to six, use that time for self help. You know, you don't need to be on the desk uh, and doing work um, as well. So this brings into my second tip, which is um, is to know when to stop. Uh, you know, uh, create a uh, create, put an alarm in your uh, on your computer or on your phone, or if you're like us. The power auto, uh, the power uh, power <laughs> power platform uses create a flow which sends out a notification like in a every 15 minutes or every 30 minutes asking you to get up and and go for a, a quick walk or you know go get your water or you know go to the toilet or whatever uh, or send a remind set set yourself a, a flow reminder to stop work at five o'clock or 4:30 or 4:45 or whenever you wanted to stop and have that self help hour for yourself. Sure. And uh, on that note, though, I really love, um, of course, as I said early on, I'm an Apple fan, no doubt. And I love the little notifications that comes up on the Apple Watch is saying time to stand up, time yeah. to go for a quick walk, things yeah. like that. It's just amazing, especially in the in this current state of times, I'm actually embracing all these stuff because in the yep. past i just used to dismiss this notification. So we also uh, we're going to talk about uh, the Easter break. Easter break is coming up on us. So we generally, uh, what, what what you guys planning to do during the Easter break? If you're not doing, don't work. Uh, so we have four days of of uh, of things. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to use that time to build my remote work portal or anything like that. I'm going to switch off my Office 365 stuff and work on something yeah. else. Um, uh, Stefano, uh, what are you doing? Uh, what you, what's your plans for Easter break? Uh, plan in progress because obviously I was planning for uh, some nice trip around the country. Now we're going to stay home, uh, looking for uh, catching up uh, uh, with uh, some homework, uh, maybe clean up the garage <laughs> and <laughs> just spending some quality time with family at the end. I have two daughters uh, and uh, we are all home together and uh, why not just uh, staying together? Uh, we bought an Xbox, can I say Xbox, uh, <laughs> recently. So just uh, you know, spending some time and playing together. Yeah, Chanda, what's your plans? Um, look, I generally, uh, it's the same plan that I do every weekend. So this time it will be an extended weekend for me, uh, like everyone else, obviously. Um, so I'll be out on the bike, my push bike, 
for a long bike ride and I'm, I'll, of course, we've got four days, I might be doing a long run because I had signed up for about 14 races for this year and uh, about at least four of them have either been cancelled or have been moved. So I'll, be, I'll still be training thinking that there is going to be a race at some point this year. I'll be happy if I'm able to do at least one running race this year. So let's see. I'll still be training, long story short. And I will also be setting up my backyard office. So I'll have to clean a few things in my backyard, no doubt. Uh, How are you guys going to so- do that? Uh, do, do, you, do you need like, a, like an alfresco or a... Uh- I already have an alfresco. And of course, since I said I've got a dog at home too, so there's some minor things that I need to clean. But apart from that, I think my backyard office should be ready. So I I want to be in a position where I can switch between my home office inside, indoors, and my backyard office, which is totally outside, but covered under an alfresco. Um, yeah. With some fresh air, sunlight, whatever the day looks like. Look forward to that. I, I, I keen to see your backyard office, and maybe we can do one of the episodes in your backyard of office, man. That's right. Yeah. What, yeah. So what, what I'm you... actually, uh, me, we usually go for camping during Easter breaks, uh, but now we can't do that uh, yeah. anymore. I'm actually contemplating on whether doing a a backyard style um, <laughs> camping. You know, I have my camp tent and everything. I can set up my own camp and uh, uh, and get like you know get Arjun, my three year old to come and uh, have uh, maybe we do if if uh, if the weather permits we uh, have a fire going like in a fire pit and see if we can do something like that nice idea lovely excellent yeah okay. thanks guys uh, so i look forward to our next episode thanks for sharing your thoughts on uh, office 65 apps for remote work um thank you thank you Jack. Thank, thank, thank you so much Ciao. thank you no. There you have it, guys. Uh, it is amazing and very insightful discussion with Stefano and Chanda from SXIQ about how Office 365 apps and business solutions can support your remote workforce. Next week, we will discuss tips on how to stay secure and protect your critical business information when working remotely. Please subscribe uh, to the show for more interesting content on Office 365 Modern Workplace User Stories. This is Jag Kakhadlapuri from Modern Work signing out. Please stay safe.